I recently had the opportunity to sit down and talk with author Linda Graham about her book, Resilience, Powerful Practices for Bouncing Back from Disappointment, Difficulty, and Even Disaster. I hope that you'll enjoy the interview. The title of your book is Resilience, mm -hmm. and I'm curious how you would define that word. So resilience is a capacity, it's innate in the brain, we can develop it, to face and deal with life's challenges, to bounce back from adversity. And whether that's, you know, barely a wobble, some minor disappointment, to a serious struggle and a heartache, to really the trauma of too much being dumped out of our boat. So we can develop capacities to bounce back from anything that disrupts our resilience and our well-being at any level. You say early in the book that flexibility mm -hmm. is the core of resilience. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about that? So there's a capacity in the brain of response flexibility that allows us to perceive and then shift our perspective, our response to something. And that's what's really key to resilience. My colleague Frankie Perez says, how you respond to the issue is the issue. So we're cultivating that capacity to mm, be able to see and catch our automatic habitual responses to things and to be able to shift them to new options, wiser choices. And you also say that resilience is truly recoverable. Thanks to the neuroplasticity in the brain that even when we have our conditioned patterns and the neural circuitry has been laid down out of experience, we can use that neuroplasticity to create new patterns of response, to rewire the old patterns of response. So as we learn how the brain works and how to work with it to create new responses, then yes, the capacities that our brain supports are fully recoverable. And why do some people react to a trauma, like losing their home or losing a spouse, by seeming to fall apart when other people react to the same trauma seemingly unscathed and even grow from the experience? So we do know from research that different people will respond to the same trauma differently. Even the same person can respond to the same event differently at different times in their lives. So now the scientists are saying there's really some factors that contribute to resilience and whether people go into trauma or not. It's the severity of the external stressor or event. It's the strength of their external resources in terms of people and financial and medical. And it's their own internal resources of grit and determination and courage and compassion. I would add to that, <clears throat> it's also people's internal messages that they tell themselves about how well they're coping or not coping. So depending on those factors, people will perceive and then respond to an event differently. We know that when people are stressed or there's an accumulation of stressors, it's much harder for the higher brain to stay online. When we're tired, when we're frightened, it's much harder for the higher brain to stay online. So there's so many factors that go into that. What I try to teach in the book is that <clears throat> even if, even if the resilience isn't available at first, even if people experience trauma, even if there's been an accumulation of trauma over time, it's still possible to recover the resilience and come out of those experiences into what's now called post-traumatic growth. Mm, post-traumatic growth. Talk a little bit more about that. When we can work with whatever has happened and however we have responded to what's happened. So accepting the reality, accepting the consequences, coming out of shame, blame, judgment of ourselves. We're human beings. We're doing the best we can. And being able to cultivate mm, resources in terms of people, um, resources in terms of positive experiences that we can use to rewire the negative experiences, tools that we can use to um, find the silver lining, find the lessons learned, find the gift in the mistake, finding something redemptive in whatever has happened or how we have responded to what's happened, and to be able to put that together into a coherent narrative. This is what happened, this is how I responded, this is how I do it differently if I could do it over, this is what I've learned since then. Most importantly, this is what I've come to appreciate because of what happened, not just in spite of what happened, 
but because of what happened. New growth, new strengths, new opportunities, new possibilities, new perspectives. So it can take time and a lot of practice and a lot of help and support, but it is quite possible for people to recover from a truly devastating uh, a cat catastrophe and still find new strengths, find their resilience again. Resilience includes 130 experiential exercises, lots of exercises, and I'd love to know which one you would say you use the most personally. The one I use the most personally and the one I teach first to clients, to workshop participants, is hand on the heart because it works so reliably and so quickly. So it, it is simply, shall I show yes, you? Okay, please. so you simply put your own hand on your own heart center so you can feel the warm touch of your hand on your heart. And then you begin to breathe more slowly and deeply into the heart center so you're activating the parasympathetic branch of the nervous system calming down. You begin to breathe in a sense of ease or goodness or safety or trust and that restores your heart rate, heart rate variability. And then you begin to remember a moment when you felt safe and loved and cherished with another person or with a pet. And as you remember that moment of feeling safe and loved and cherished, and it could be a partner, it could be a child, it could be a good friend, it could be a therapist or a spiritual figure, and it could be a pet, you can begin to feel the oxytocin beginning to flow through your body. Oxytocin is the brain's hormone of safety and trust, calm and connect. It's the immediate and direct antidote to the stress hormone cortisol. So when you get the oxytocin flowing, you can actually feel your body calming down and, and coming back into center. Because it works so quickly, it can calm down a panic attack in less than a minute. I teach that to people right off the bat. And I have them practice that, not just when things are startling or upsetting or distressing, but just go through your day 15 times a day. Practice this tool because you're training your brain to mm. do it automatically as soon as there's a moment of stress or upset. And what do you most hope that readers will take away from your book, Resilience? That they have choices. I do put together quotes from two people in the book, Catch the Moment, Make the Choice, from my friend Janet Friedman. And every moment has a choice, every choice has an impact, from Julia Butterfly Hill. So if you put those together, that's the trajectory of resilience. Catch the moment, make a choice. Every moment has a choice, every choice has an impact. And when people can really begin to own that, for themselves, then, then that's how they become more resilient.